Who else has a little trouble with organization in, in your life? I'm one of them. Sometimes I can be a little bit disorganized and I'm trying to do a much, much better job. One of the things we need to have here is a flat place to work, whether it's sharpening a chainsaw, servicing a chainsaw, cleaning a carburetor, all your, all your uh, general maintenance items, they need to be done. Got a couple manual transmissions to rebuild that will need to press, but uh, they still need to have a flat place to work. So I wanted to build a bench and I built, I built quite a few benches and this design seems to be, at least in my opinion, super duper crazy easy. We have a total of two four by four by eight. They happen to be treated. It's an indoor thing. You don't need to have them treated. My local hardware store only carries treated four by fours. So four by four by eights, you need two of them, cut them in half and you're gonna have to chew up the other end. So really you just need to have a circular saw and you need to cut it. Circular saw, band saw, you could use a chainsaw if you really want to, like whatever you want to do. I just use circular saw and made a couple cuts around the outside, which fully cut it. And you're gonna need to chew them up because four by four by eights notoriously are the wrong length. They're slight, usually slightly more than eight feet. And then you need to have six two by four by eights untreated. Two get, let's see here, four get cut in half. No, wait, hold on a second. Two get cut in half. So you have two four bys on the outside of each part and then your eights are uncut. So you have four eights and then two two by four by eights get cut in half to make four four by eight, dang it, four, two by four by four. And those are your side pieces. Now, bonus points, I like to do it where I have a four by eight drop in piece of plywood, four foot by eight foot piece of plywood that drops in here so I get a lower shelf. And I made this one 12 inches um, from the bottom of the two by four. So we're talking approximately 16 inches on the top from the floor which we will never have a flooding issue here, but if you have a place that maybe you need to worry about flooding, maybe you wanna go higher or whatever, this will maximize what I can put down here and what I'm planning to put down here is potentially um, maybe some tools, you know, your standard things that need to get off the floor and uh, not take up floor space. So ideally you would wanna have a tape measure and a marking pencil of some kind or a Sharpie or something that you like to have. A impact driver is a really, really nice thing to have, um, super duper nice, and a circular saw or a, um, if you had a bandsaw or some sort of cutting apparatus or a handsaw, there's really not that many cuts with this, that's the beauty of it. Uh, you're cutting two four by fours in half, so that's technically a total of four cuts because you really want to true them up so that the height is the same because my, what I like to do is set the four by four down or the four by eight down on top of everything. So this lower four by four, we're going to cut notches out of it. So we're gonna have four by four notches cut out of the corners, which is ideally done with a circular saw because it is super duper slick. You might wanna have some saw horses or a, an additional flat surface. The whole reason why I'm building this is I really don't have that many flat surfaces. I built way too much crap in the back of my truck. I need to go through that 5.3 that's on the floor. I wanna get all the parts up and take a look at it and see if we can salvage some of them. So lots of things need to be done and we need to have a flat surface. So we're going to get a flat surface. And I think it's going to go right there. Um, kind of like teeing out so that it's an easy workbench to get to from either the door or the big door. Um, and we're going to clean up this section here. A lot of stuff just ended up here like that semi wheels from a case. Um, if, everybody, if anybody needs a semi wheel, let me know. I'll sell it to you cheap. Uh, don't know anything about it. I don't I think there's a sticker on it that shows the specs. If someone really wants to know about it, um, comment. But we need to sell it. It's just an extra wheel sitting around from, I'm pretty sure that case of uh, semi wheel came off, if I remember correctly. I think the lugs got loose and it wallowed out the holes in the semi wheel. That's a steer. Um, at least I'm pretty sure that was what the case was. It's a long time ago. Um, yeah. So bottom two by four, or bottom four by eight drops in. And I just use half inch plywood, works out fine. I have some drops from my building that are two by tens and two by twelves. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reinforce the corners so that in the future, if I wanted to put a vise or other types of tools in the corners, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build some two by, uh, two by 10 gussets because I have a pile of two by tens. So we'll, we'll see how that works too. And literally the noise of everything falling is literally the snow coming off the building because we're having a sudden melt. This is driving nuts. This, this weather is killing me. We finally get snow, and then here in the thumb, it decides it doesn't want to be 
wintertime anymore. So hard to keep track of. At least we got some snowmobiling in this weekend. We rode around the field last night, my buddy is and I. So that, that was kind of fun when we had some fresh snow. And now we got rained on and now it's melting. Very depressing. So this is my little workbench setup. I like to have the four by four be able to sit with the edge on these two by fours or four by four, I keep saying that. I like to have the four by eight sitting down on the long edge of that. And we, we may, I think I got some drops around here to put some reinforcements here and there, but really you're just not gonna really have too much of a problem. Uh, half inch plywood is super strong. It's not OSB, it's half inch plywood. So then kind of, the way I kind of build these is kind of like its own aesthetic structure is its structure. So it's kind of like a unibody car where like the workbench's appearance is its structure. And I like that. So. We're gonna keep cranking away. I wanted to get it here because if it's just in pieces on the floor, that just is so hard to follow. So now we're gonna go notch a four by eight and get it in here because I wanna stop looking at them in the back of my truck. I wanna get them cut. So we're gonna go notch some four by eights and um, see where we stand on that. So we'll talk in a few minutes. As you guys can see, we are super close. I need to clean up this one just a smidgen. That's what's great about mine, so. When you cut it close like that, this thing becomes a rock solid member of the team here. So we took the fine saw and we cleaned up the edges. You can see, unfortunately, I had to go get this wood in the freezing, horrible mix, rain, snow, crap we have. So, you know, is what it is, she'll dry. I turned up the heat just for this occasion. So we are going to send in some screws, I think. Or I, I, you know what? I think we might save our screws, man. This thing is freaking strong. I, I think we're good. So we're going to keep on going, save the screw, save the time, and keep on moving forward because it's just, uh, when, when you cut them this close where it's all, you know, a tight fit, it's just really a, a rock solid unit. So we're going to keep pressing on. We got to do our upper, upper two by fours, um, and our, well, our upper long two by fours, and our upper cross pieces. So we will move on to them and we'll keep on trucking. We'll see where we end up. Thank you guys. So here we are. It's a little bit later. I had to go back and have some dinner with the family. Think that is basically indestructible. I'm pretty sure you could set a pickup truck on top of that thing, it would be okay. So we're going to see if we could put in some big old pieces of two by 10 or two by 12 uh, pre-cut boards that I just had dropped so that way we have some not that we really need any reinforcement in the corners but somewhere if we wanted to mount something like a drill press in the future should we want to do that or a, uh, a a bench grinder things like that we already have a bench grinder over there but we'll see definitely a vice we can sharpen chainsaws never know what else we might want to put here so I'm going to keep on Keep on trucking, we'll see where we end up. All right, got ourselves some future vice mounts slash whatever the heck you may want to also mount on here. Now it's time to cap it off. I think that turned out awesome. How nice that thing looks, heck yeah. Now I made it four foot tall. I'm 6'2 and I don't really like bending over and whatever. Especially when I'm sharpening chainsaws, that sucks. Nothing like doing a, a hunchback when you're trying to sharpen a chainsaw, it's awful. So uh, I did make it four foot tall. If you are shorter, you may want to make it shorter to fit your own personal ergonomics that work for you. You may also want to have a specific height, as I talked about before. If you have a, if you're going to build something like this in your basement or, or if you have somewhere that might flood, you may want to make your shelf a little higher. I can't imagine this ever flooding considering that it's like, it's like 30 inches high on the one end and 18 inches above grade on the other end. So, uh, as we, we have, we, the field slopes a little bit. So, can't believe this thing is ever going to get wet. Unless the roof came in, which wouldn't be very good. So, I did 
12 inches to the bottom, so 16 inches on the top. Should have plenty of room if we wanted to tuck some things underneath there. I'm pretty sure you can chainsaw or slide underneath there. I, I was kind of thinking about that. I'm like, you know, maybe I should have made this up. Should have thought about that so I could slide in a chainsaw underneath. But I guess I, uh, I didn't think about that. So is what it is. I think maybe a smaller chainsaw, like a 50cc saw, might slide underneath there, but I'm not sure a bigger one will. So what do you guys think? We're going to throw a top on. All right, we are crowning this one the beast. I'm going to back up. Oh, baby, would you look at that thing? There's a little bit of set on that top piece of plywood. A little bit of weight on there over time, it'll get set out. No, no, no piece of plywood is ever is ever perfect. Sometimes they have a little bit of an arch to them. It is what it is. Oh, yeah. What do you guys think? I think that looks fantastic. This will hugely help organization here because I have a bad habit of putting things where they shouldn't belong. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. This is super easy. You can build it yourself. You need a box of, uh, well, I like using deck screws. There's always going to be your screw versus nail argument. I like deck screws. So that's what I made this with. Three inch, three inch deck screws with Torx head. I like Torx heads. Uh, an impact driver is a very nice thing to have. That is probably the most handy tool, period. Um, circular saw doesn't hurt. A fine saw never hurts. It's a wonderful tool. Um, what else? Um, pencil, tape measure, a couple saw horses wouldn't hurt. You could also just build some saw, saw horses. So yeah, I think we got it. It's about time to go to bed. So. I'd say that was a, de a decent afternoon, evening accomplishment. Hopefully you guys take care. And if you want to build something cool like this, hopefully this can be some inspiration. Or if you have a different idea of how you do it, feel free to share it. I'll be putting a vise in a convenient place here. Probably that corner over there, the far, the far corner over by the DeWalt. The impact driver, because I think that'll make the most sense here for mostly sharp for sharpening chainsaws or anything else you may want to use a vice for. So yeah, hopefully you guys take care. Have a good day.